Hi everyone, this is Anthony from Gaming Cards and More. Welcome back to another Calgary Flames Franchise GM mode. We are here as the Calgary Flames. We're 33, 25, and 5. And we are looking to make a push for the playoffs. We don't have a whole lot of assets to be able to make a trade to get a good piece for our push. But I might be looking to make a cap shed sort of trade deal something where we can just get the right piece so I was looking over here at Columbus and I found someone that may be able to help us out a little bit and that's on the block and that's Josh Anderson and for Josh Anderson we would likely be giving up you know someone like Froleek where the cap space is more in our favor but we're going to go with a fourth round pick and Josh Anderson. And we are going to take a peek at what they're interested in on the block here. So let's scroll through. We'll take a peek at everything that they're interested or everything now instead of just what they're interested in. There's Froleek. We're going to put Froleek in even though they don't want him. And maybe just a small piece to to send this over so like I said we don't have a lot of prospects or anything this Phillips guy is 66 overall at 21 top six forward potential they do want him so I'm gonna throw that in there and hope that this trade goes through so Anderson from their side 1.85 million one year left and indeed it does go through so we're gonna make that trade and with that, I'll have to go through and re-edit the lines and everything. But that should help sustain our team a little better than what we do already have. I think Anderson will be, being younger, will be an upgrade over for Leak for us. So, I mean, his overall is a little lower. But as you saw with the team, it's not a great team right now. Um, my prediction is we're probably going to get wiped in the playoffs if we even get there. So first couple years is going to be a little bit of a, a rebuild retool here. So here I'm just calling up Godwin uh, from the miners just to have for a, um, a scratched player. With all the injuries we've had here, it's, it's pretty bad. So Anderson there on our lineup shows up as an 82. So it's only a two-point downgrade. And we're going to put Godwin in instead of the defenseman we had there. So, you know, it, I mean, he's only, what, 69 overall. But, again, better than a defenseman there and a minus three. So I don't feel like uh, signing a whole bunch of players when I'm finally starting to shed some cap space. And uh, we'll just go finish editing up the rest of these lines here. Make a few moves here and there. And then we can hopefully get on to some simming. But uh, the prospect pool is pretty, pretty ugh right now for us. Um, looking forward to this first draft, the next draft. Like I said in the previous video, there are going to be some created players in there. The highest overall, I think think is an 86 or an 87 which were goalies and I also went in and edited before I started this some random players and made them better one on each guy of the WHL team so and they ate ranged in age so they may be drafted they may not be drafted but I did go make somebody a little bit better on each team and that'll just spice things up a little bit for the randomness so here we're going to take a look at some contract extensions and see what people are looking for so TJ Brody wants a payday the question is is he somebody that we want to give that kind of money to I mean I think we need to hold on to him because of our defense situation as you can see, we only have like 11 point something million of cap space. And he wants like half of it. 
And then we've got Hamnick as well. He doesn't want an extension, so I'll likely just let him walk. Austin Sarnik, who's been doing great at depth for us, we'll give that kind of an extension to. Um, give him a couple years there. And we're going to take a look at Reader now and see what his extension is. He wants a massive deal. Definitely not worth it. He'll probably get traded uh, at the deadline, or sorry, not the deadline, the draft after the playoff push. So, Godwin, just because he's up in the club and needed the extension, we're going to give a little extension to. Hey, I mean, he's probably going to be nothing. He's a medium top nine. Can use him in the AHL in the future. Rasmus Anderson at 80 overall. Looking for like 2.95. Not a bad deal for Rasmus Anderson. We're just going to see what he's looking for if we gave, went all the way up in years. And he's looking at like a 4.575 or something like that kind of deal. So, I mean, he has potential to get better, but I don't know if I want to commit eight years at four point something million dollars right now. So I'm thinking more along what he's looking for, the three years, and giving a little less because he was interested in a contract extension. So usually when they are interested in a comp contract extension, you can get it for 0.85 or 85% of what they're asking for. So take out your calculator, take what they're asking for, and times it by 0.85, and that's usually what you can get a player for. Shillington wanted a little bit of a payday. Mangiapani. Nice and cheap, so we're going to sign him immediately. I uh, don't see any reason why not to. And that's it for looks like the forwards for now. We'll have to make some decisions on those higher-end contracts at another time. Take a peek at the goalies. So Talbot's done at the end of the year. Probably going to let him walk. I'm sure I can find like a 78, 79, 80 overall in free agency for half that much. So no point in paying two point something million dollars. For a player that is probably not going to get the kind of ice time that they want at all. I'm a little little peeved that Hamannick is not wanting an extension though. Because he is a cheaper option than TJ Brody. Shillington, with how old he is, 22 years old. I feel really bad just letting him go without any sort of asset. So he might be a trade piece as well. But again, 77 overall at 22, is he worth $3 million? I highly doubt that. So I'm going to go take a peek at the Trade Finder. See what kind of offers are available on Hamannick here before the deadline. If I can find another D piece or something like that, that would be a suitable swap. I would go with that. Maybe a decent draft pick for this year or next year. Um, like I said... I think we'll just barely squeak into the playoffs, and once we're there, we'll probably get handled. So, is really having Hamannick for a few more games going to be that big of a difference? Is he going to win us the cup? Probably not. But there in the trade finder is a first from next year, and a, I think a third from this year, from Nashville. So that could be an option. And then just a whole lot of other players in seconds or thirds. Not really anything that... I am looking for. I would say the Nashville one was probably my best bet. So we get a third this year and a first next year. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm going to go in and try and mess around with it and see if there's anybody at all that we would be interested in taking from them. I would like to have a player of sorts or even a first from next year. Uh, or that same first from next year, but like a player to go with it. So, of course, I need a replacement defenseman. So that's the first thing I'm going to look at. And it doesn't look like there's a whole lot available that could replace um, Hamannick at the moment. But, I mean, those are the breaks sometimes. You know, I want to shed some of that cap there. And he's asking for a huge, huge raise for next year doesn't want to sign with the team so obviously this one didn't work out 
tried to grab just an extra defenseman there, Santini. They don't want to get rid of him. So now I'm looking at possibly giving them a f scrap player just to get some value in there. So we're going to throw in Derek Ryan. And now I have to add something because they have more... Uh, they have too many contracts. They can't take this trade, so... They don't have anyone really in, interested to give up that I want, but I'm just going to take something to get the deal to go through. So I'm hoping this here will work. But because he wasn't under contract, it's not going to work. I have to take back a contracted player. So we're going to go look around and see who's there that possibly I could steal as a contracted player. Austin Watson, maybe. The values just aren't right. So we're going to go back to the drawing board. Go back to the original deal. And try and squeeze a second instead of a third. No, nope, they don't like that. <laughs> they didn't like that at all. So go back to the third. The same trade they had offered. And we'll go with that one. See how things go from there. So now back to some line editing. I mean, this is a little more busy than I thought I was going to be at the trade deadline. Um, I wasn't really expecting to make a whole lot of moves, being that we don't have a lot of draft picks or prospects. And I want to keep, you know, Goudreau, Monahan, Kachuk, Lindholm. I mean, I could move Giordano, but he is literally the cornerstone of our defense right now. So I'm probably going to keep him around for a little bit. And once we get these lines all edited up properly... I'm sure we can get into some sim here. Of course, I always forget to go do the AHL lines when I call somebody up. Or the power play penalty kill lines when there's an injury. So, you know, I'll go fix these right now. But <laughs> down to a 55 overall guy getting some ice time down in, in Stockton. That's funny. So... I guess it is what it is, right? When you got those players. I don't got a lot of cap space. I got lots of contract room, but I don't got the cap space. So we're hoping cap's going to go up, which it usually does. We're hoping that we can shed some cap contracts at the draft and start a little bit of a rebuild. Because I believe with the team that we have here and their overalls, we're just not going to get anywhere. So let's get up to the end of the season here. Get some simulation going and see where we fall by the end of the season so we get some contracts some guys are deciding to stick with us Anderson Godwin Nason we got some guys ready to come back so we'll go take a peek at that get some guys back in our lineup Uh, Sarnik and Bennett. So we're going to get Bennett back in. Because my goal was to hopefully get him up into like an 82-83 range. And be a legit third, maybe into the second line kind of player. And we're going to put him right back up on the first line, I'm pretty sure. to get him that bit of overall but we're going to take Magipani out and put Zarnik in just overall reasons I mean we already lost uh, for a leak in that trade the lines are looking a little little shaky here so we're going to get Bennett up on the first line hopefully get some growth out of him have Anderson as the main guy on the third line um, hopefully Kachuk or Kachuk Lucic can uh Give him a little bit of support there. And so far in his two games with Calgary, he's a plus one, two penalty minutes. So, I mean, he hasn't made a huge impact. No points yet. We're going to get Jankowski off the point in the power play. And get Bennett right back on there. Anderson slotted to onto the second power play on the left wing side. And we're going to leave that there as well. So there's a loss to Nashville. Loss to Florida. 
Tobias Reader is fully healed and available. And somebody from Stockton, that D-man, is also available. We can get rid of that 55 overall guy. We'll not get rid of him, but take him out. Get Valley of back in. That'll help the lines a little bit, I think. I mean, not drastically, but... And I didn't bother doing anything with the reader. And there goes Sam Bennett again. So the whole Sam Bennett back onto the first line experiment. First line power play time. Trying to get some growth out of the guy. Just hits a brick wall. So we're going to throw in Mangiapani and hope for the best. Probably get Anderson back up on the first line. Put Sarnik on the third line and Mangiapani on the fourth Oh, we're going to bring up Jankowski on to the third instead of Sarnik. I like that a little bit better. Let's find a replacement for Bennett on the first power play at the point. And it's going to be Jankowski just because I know he's not on any of the power play lines and he seemed to be doing okay in that role already. So taking some losses here, some big time losses. Not a fan of all these losses, uh, and the not a fan of the injuries. Like it's just killing me. I contemplated, and I'll be honest with you guys. I started a temp test run of this series, and in my first video for the test run, I did an hour of simulation and made it like twelve or thirteen games into the season because it was all injuries, injury, 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 injury. So I figured, you know what, we're going to scrap that. It was a good test. I'll start all over, and we'll go from there. And this has been pretty close to the same darn story. Just too many freaking injuries. So the guy down in Stockton, the defenseman just came back. He's injured again. And that's why I put it on wait till they're fully healed, um, because I don't want to take those chances of re-injury. But yet, as soon as they're fully healed, guys like Bennett and that Valley of, pff, gone again immediately. So, I really don't know what to do at this point, but we're going to need to bring somebody up for depth, I think. And we'll take a peek at what's available. Dubay still, still toast. Godwin, we're just going to send back down. I mean, we don't need him up there anymore. But, our depth situation is just quite scary at the moment, so... I mean, I don't know exactly how much we're going to be able to do in this run here at the end of the season. We've already taken quite a few losses. I'll be surprised if we do make the playoffs. And there goes Monaghan. So, yeah, making the playoffs is going to be a big, 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 big if with Monaghan out. Especially at the end of the season here where you want to start winning games and building momentum. And I did notice Mangiapani grew up grew up grew to being a seventy-five. So that's that's good. I mean, he did gain an overall there. That's always nice. And Valiev's back, so we're gonna throw him back in. But how long before he just goes out again? That was a nice five four win against the Islanders. And Linus Lindstrom is back. Or has been injured, sorry. And now we gotta replace him. Good thing we just sent Godwin back down. So, or God in. We'll send him in. 4 nothing win over the Jets. And Anderson. Good old Rasmus Anderson. Out now. So as you can see, the injury bug has taken a hold of our team. We are taking a beating in the injury front. Like, I can't see how we can keep up pressure to keep a playoff spot with that kind of injury. But onto the draft class, looks like the Forest created player um, is going to be number one over Lafreniere, which I mean he's probably an 84 overall. It's been a while since I created him. I will note that a lot of these guys that are already being scouted for some reason it's really weird. EA never actually does scout them. So anybody that isn't being scouted, go in and make sure you're scouting them because you want to get some results, even if you have it on auto scouting. They don't always just get these guys, so 
I try and get as much of the first round done as I can and then I go by potentials and find the highest potential guys that I can find to draft and I try and have picks in those areas if possible but it gets a lot easier when you get better scouts I mean our scouts at this point are just trash so give me two three four five years in right and we'll have better scouts better coaching probably a more solid team altogether I'd say it's gonna be three to six years before we're really competing um, for a Stanley Cup at any point or consistently um, by that time we'll probably have no longer have Giordano we may even be out of like someone like Johnny Goudreau or Monaghan who knows when you're looking that far into the future but <coughs> excuse me we're hoping that our draft and our prospect pool in the next coming coming years here with uh, some of the creative players and stuff will really help us so I want to stock up on first round picks and just hope that some one of them ends up being a lottery pick And here we are with another injury, so we're going to slot Mangiapane back in. You know, it's really funny when you're running out of depth. So, I mean, Lindstrom is back, but God got in, has uh, worked his way up to a 70 overall with the little bit of ice time he's finally been given, which is what Lindstrom is, is a 70 overall. So, you know... Kind of figured I should give God in some ice time with how he's growing and his age and stuff like that. Like, we may want him to be a, a decent player. All the rest of my prospects are in, like, they're 25, 26, 27. They're going to be career AHL guys, so. And we take a loss and another. So things aren't looking so good, and now we lose Valimaki. So, as you can see, our team is just one too many injuries so we've got Anderson back so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go put Anderson in on the offense for Mangiapane and put Mangiapane in on the defense and even though Anderson isn't fully healed I mean without calling somebody up it's really the only thing I can do at this point so we'll get Mangiapane in on defense on the third line and we're going to hope uh, Anderson doesn't get hurt. So he's back. He's good. Didn't get hurt any further. And we're going to keep on going. That's a 3 nothing win. Big win. Up against the Jets. And now we lose Quine. Or, er, sorry, get Quine back. So we can get rid of this 56 overall or whatever. Hopefully he did some justice up there on the first line. And right now I'm just realizing that I had Nason and he's sitting in the freaking my AHL not being used. I signed him for depth and he's sitting in the AHL not being used. So I'm going to dress him, get him playing, and then I have another option on the depth front if I need to call somebody up. So, I mean, what was the point of me signing him and then just sitting them scratched in the AHL? That was not what I was hoping for. He should have been on my main roster and as a scratch for me to be able to use when I needed to, but I've just been kind of, you know, unclear as to what's going on here with all the darn injuries. So, out goes Mangiapane, and ironically enough, Valimaki was back. So, luckily there, I mean, he's not fully healed, but he's a defenseman. There's only two games left, a loss to the Golden Knights. He's available to play now, so that means he didn't get hurt again, and a win over Edmonton. So, let's see how things turn out now. Johnny Goudreau with 78 points in 82 games. Not quite a point per game. Uh, Monaghan was 63 in 79. Lindholm was 60 in 81. Backland with 50 and 82, Kachuk in 45 and 82, Anderson 41 and 81, Ryan 34 and 82, Reeder 28, Jankowski 28, Lucic 25. So you can see we don't have a whole lot of scoring. Bennett, when he was playing, was a minus two with 24 points. Um, kind of taking a beating. Giordano and Hannafin and Brody are our three-headed dragon on defensemen. 
you can see they're the ones who carried the bulk of our load mind you I don't know what Hamannick had because we got rid of Hamannick and you can see uh, Talbot's 12 7 and 3 with two shutouts but likely gone because I don't want to pay that kind of money for uh, a backup goalie when I can get one for probably under half the price so let's go check out the league see where everybody stacks up at the end of the year and just for forwards we have Connor McDavid with 104 points we're gonna go back to all skaters though because I want to see if there's any D that make it in the top but leading the way in goals is Ovechkin then Kucherov Marchand leading in assists Aho, McDavid, Carlson, Drouin, Sagan. Points, McDavid, Sagan, Kucherov, Aho, McKinnon, Ovechkin. So there are going to be quite a few people over a point per game. I have it on high scoring. And I uh, bumped the attribute effect up to max. So the attributes of the players are going to actually mean something when it's bumped up to max. So if you have guys who have really high skill, those those players are going to have the best effect out of the attributes being bumped up. And then with the scoring sim on high as well, you're going to get quite a few guys at that point per game range. So you can take a look at the list here. I'm going to scroll a little bit down for you. And then we're going to check out defensemen. So the top defenseman, Eric Carlson with 78 points in 76 games, plus 13. You guys can take a look at that here. Um, just give you an idea there's Gio so he's not bad he's he's up there pretty decently and now for the goalies and it looks like it's gonna be Dubnik so Dubnik has 44 wins 9 shutouts 922 save percentage but when you go down the list he's the only one with enough game played with that high of a save percentage so yeah definitely gonna be Dubnik for the Vesna and I mean, for goals against average, again, leading the way, Martin Jones is the closest with that many kinds of games. I mean, Kemper and that there have 30, Crawford has 37, but I don't think that's enough games to throw over, overthrow Dubnik from that spot there. So for rookies, Jack Hughes leads the way with 62, Colin White with 57, Nick Hash with 52, Cody Glass with 42, Dylan Gambrell with 33. Alex Nylander with 30. You guys can have an idea there. We'll check out the rookie goalie, see if someone maybe come up and stole the show. Doesn't look like it. There's only uh, five rookie goalies. None played more than 30 games, so we're around the 30-game mark. And let's see uh, who our opponent is. If we get one, a Vegas. So we are in the playoffs. We are up against Vegas. We're going to go take a peek at what Vegas has to offer here. If I can figure out how to work the menus properly, I will go look at Vegas' team for us. So Marcia So, Stastny, Stone, Riley Smith, William Carlson, Patrick, Zekoff, Glass, Tuck, Nosek, Eakin, and Peary. On defense, they have Theodore McNabb, England Holden, Schultz, and Reeves. And in the pipes, Marc-Andre Fleury and Malcolm Subban. Scratch, so Schmidt, he'll probably key in at some point. Probably over Reeves. It looks like on paper we're pretty similar teams. I'd say they might have the edge on paper, but on paper doesn't mean anything when you're talking about an EA Sim engine. I mean, I've seen lots of people do these franchise modes or GM modes, and they have just stacked teams and get swept. So, I mean, my team's not stacked. I imagine I'm probably going to get swept. But we'll see. So that's... Uh, 3-1 loss in game one. Mangiapani is fully healed. We're going to edit the lines. Don't really need him back, I don't think. We're going to move Davidson. Oh, no, I'll keep him there because of the chemistry. 
Rasmus Anderson now. So now Davidson's gone for sure because we got Rasmus Anderson back. And I think he did admirably stepping in for us at a 75 overall at the end of the year when everyone's pushing for the playoffs. And another loss. So two losses already. Yeah, things aren't looking good for us. I don't know what I can do to change up the lines here to try and get some production out of the guys. I think I'm going to stack the top line. We'll get Lindholm up there, and we'll go Kachuk, Bennett, and Anderson, uh, Anderson, Bennett, and Kachuk. Sorry, Anderson, Kachuk, and Backlund because I can't speak today or any day for that matter. Um, just looking at the power play lines, trying to decide on whether or not I want to get Jankowski out of there. Put Bennett back in. I mean, we're taking a beating here. Injury-wise all year. Um, push just barely makes it into the playoffs. Down two games to none in the first round. Coming up to game three. Come on, Calgary. Let's jump in. And see if we can get a freaking win here. So first period, one nothing Vegas. Stone on Riddick. Second period, still one nothing Vegas. And come on, Calgary. Third period, we're going to sim it out slowly. Eight times speed. Power play, nothing. Come on, guys. We need something here in the last five. Anything? Another power play late goal heroics? Oh man, one nothing loss, down three to nothing in the series. I have seen a fair number of reverse sweeps, but I don't know if that's something that's going to happen this time around. That's that's a little disheartening. I mean, I didn't expect to fully make it to the playoffs, and if I did, I said we we're probably going to lose in the first round. So I can see that happening. We're just going to get in here and hope we can take a win from Vegas. We really don't want them sweeping us. So first period. 1-0 Calgary, Monaghan on Fleury. Second period, 1-1, one, one, Smith on Riddick. Oh, and Vegas gets to go ahead, J. Theodore. Oh, brutal. Yes, Backlund ties it up. Come on, Flames. Let's steal a win here, reverse sweep. We're going to have to reverse sweep these guys. Let's go. We're out shooting them a little bit, though it's really close. And into overtime. Game is over. Stone sweeps us. Are you freaking serious? We lose four freaking straight to the Vegas Golden Knights. To the Vegas Golden Knights, we lose four straight. Well, let's check out the player stats. And nobody other than Goudreau and Monahan really showed up for us. It is weak. Really weak. A lot of minuses. A lot of guys with no points. I mean, genuinely not interested in seeing any more of those stats. Yuck. Just brutal. And now we're going to get guys back from injury. Hey, you know, the team's... Team's out of the playoffs. Let's get some more guys back from injury. Just take a look at these contracts again, though, before we head into the draft and see if any of the situations have changed with uh, what maybe some of these guys are asking for. That's a big nope on the Brody front. But, I mean, Brody... Still under 30. 84 overall. You know, might be able to get a decent asset if we sign and trade. Um, Tobias Reeder, you know, $1.7 million. Not really looking to pay that for a guy playing the fourth. Maybe depth. Brendan Davidson definitely getting a contract extension, even though he's a seventh D exact. 
did a good depth role for us. Can go down to the HL and play there if need be. Jankowski also did well in depth, but again, another guy I don't want to pay that kind of money to. Same with Shillington. Um, Shillington's still really young, though. Medium top four potential. Jankowski high top six potential, so it's kind of a tough, tough call on what I want to do with these guys with the cap space that we do have. So I, I'm likely, likely going to try and re-sign Brody. I mean, I don't want to lose out on an 84 defenseman. They can turn out to be relatively decent trade value. So get him there at about 5.875 and hope he signs, which isn't too much of a raise over what he's making right now. Again, there's Talbot, but really not interested in re-signing Talbot. I can find a different backup goalie. Let's sim up to the draft. And Brody does resign. Brandon Davidson does resign. So there's a couple more off our list. Uh, Valiant is healed. I think Stockton's still going in the AHL. AHL playoff round complete. Who cares at this point? Our AHL team is brutal. I can't see them doing too, too well. <coughs> Excuse me. Take a look at the playoff tree how it stands right now. Not quite ready to be done, so let's just sim up to the draft again so we can see who wins the cup. So let's see who our cup champions are. Oh. I'll just go ahead and take a peek at the draft here. See who's being scouted, who's not being scouted. This one's a pretty important draft for us. We need to get some prospects in the pool. Um, something that maybe we can move or grow. You know, if it's a low elite and we don't think it's going to pan out, we want to draft it anyways and trade it for something in the first round for next year because there should be some really good talent in the in the first round next year, especially with creative guys and such. Um, just taking a peek here and sorting by potential to find out who may or may not be scouted at this particular moment and make sure we get them scouted up. Looks like Gauntra needs some scouting. This goalie here. We're going to scout Heward. And also in the offseason, we'll do uh, re-signing. Small peek at free agents since we don't have much cap space. And most likely uh, get some new scouting and coaching staff if possible. But just bear with me here while I get some of these guys scouted up because... Like I said, I want the best possible prospects we can get in the first couple of years. Once we get in stride with a team, I'm not going to be too, too worried about getting the absolute best. We just want to right now, first couple of years, get players to that we can use. Or use their trade value for. and Nikushkin, Nichushkin, sorry, Novak, Downey. So now we're into top sixes. So that's good for me. Let's find out who won the cup. Check out the awards. And then get into the draft. So Tampa Bay Lightning and the Rochester Americans are the champs. Tampa Bay Lightning. That one hurts me as a Flames fan, you know. I'm sure you guys know why. But congratulations to the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Rochester Americans. So there's the cap. And I would normally do the draft in the next video, but it's been a couple days since I put one out. So we'll check these uh, 
awards and trophies out and then we'll do the draft as well and I will likely do uh, contract renewals off screen for this video or for this first year but anyways here's the the winners of all the trophies Dubnik is your Vesna winner he uh, killed it in the stats like pff, by far and also gets the Jennings Chalmerson gets the Masterton Jack Adams is Benson Kopitar gets the Selkie Ted Lindsay goes to McDavid Maurice Richard goes to Ovechkin Art Ross goes to McDavid Hart goes to McDavid so there's that for you and we're gonna skip the interviews and all that so it looks like Anaheim wins the draft lottery going from six to one the Islanders go from nine to two Los Angeles go from eight to three crazy we're picking 13 via our Florida pick stayed at 13 Buffalo who is supposed to be one ends up at four and here we've got some retired players let's take a peek at who's leaving the NHL there goes Hosa, Zetterberg, Gabrick, Chara, Kunitz, Franzen, Molson, Gilbert, Reed England, McLeod, Jernica, McDonald and three goalies Gustafsson, Fast and Patzold lots of coach retirements not even gonna bother going through that Chara, Zetterberg and Gabrick are now scouts skip those interviews I'm not worried about the trade block we don't have much to put on the trade block and let's get right into this draft and then we'll end off the video so we're picking at number 13 number five is on the block so let's see if maybe we can move in and get their pick and jump up into the top five now it'll be tough with what we've got but see if we can do something just trying to think of what kind of piece I would want to put in there I mean we just got tip it Jankowski is someone that I would like to move because he wants that huge trade or sorry huge pay increase but they're not going for that and he's got more value than these guys so I'd have to go Jankowski upwards to, to make this deal and or a couple smaller pieces you try Shillington because they want him nope they're not interested in taking in cap uh, extra cap so that just means you might as well give up they're never going to accept the trade we can try for the 10th spot that's only moving up three picks Jankowski and that draft pick maybe oh no we'll try Jankowski and Shillington see if maybe that goes through no that's not gonna go it was pretty close value but whatever we'll just pick our 13th spot <coughs> after we see what we can get for uh Jankowski I mean he has done his contract there's a first rounder from Philly and San Jose for next year those will be good so something to think about there same with Florida like I said next year's draft should be good so I would gladly take 
a first round pick for next year for Jankowski on an expiring contract. So we're going to do that. And same with Shillington. Also wants a huge pay raise. So oh, first pick was made. And there goes DeForest. 84 overall medium elite is your first overall pick. Which is going to make Lafreniere the second overall pick. Find uh, Shillington here. And see what's available for Shillington. There's a first for next year. Again, another definitely something we're going to want. We may not be good for the course of the season, but at least we're going to have some draft picks that we can move and trade to get up in the draft and maybe get one or two really solid players to help for year three. So that's my plan right now. I'd like to be competitive in year three, maybe four. So we'll see how that goes. That is the long-term goal. Be competitive for a few years, or in a few years. Right now, I mean, we did make the playoffs, but we got swept in the first round. And it's just something I don't think with the team we have is going to progress any better. So we really just need to start making and finding young talent that we can use for either the system or as trade assets. And so now I'm just looking for guys I'm not going to re-sign that I would just be letting go in the signing stage and seeing what I can get for them. So Reader's not being re-signed. So what are some offers for Tobias Reader that we could use? As you can see, we had 29 offers. Just going to go through and pick the best draft picks, most likely. Or what I feel will end up being the best draft picks. And we'll take a fifth and a seventh for Reader. Not a huge return, but it'll work. see what we can get for Quine. Oh, maybe Mason with a little bit of value. I mean, we just signed him for depth and then I forgot about him <laughs> and never used him. He sat scratched in the AHL till towards the end of this video here where we finally put him in. But So we'll just deal him for a couple picks and move on from that. think that'll be it for now so yes Lafreniere went second we're gonna sim up to our pick we'll go back take a peek at who the top tens were so there you can see Lafreniere third was a high top four 76 overall medium elite 80 overall high top four I think that's 75 overall so we're not bad picks here Kind of drops down a bit for the Rangers. And then picks right back up for Colorado with Lucas Raymond and Buffalo with Holtz. And then Perfetti and Byfield. So those were four good back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back picks. That should work out for these guys. And Chung goes to Columbus at 70 overall. And now it is our pick. So we get Lundell from the looks of it. And I'm just going to straight up take Lundell. So, we get a medium elite 70 overall with our first first round pick, and then we're going to jump to our 21st overall pick. Just take a peek and see who went. So, there were some not bad picks there. With our 21st overall pick, we are likely going to take 
Downey, I would think, because he's guaranteed to be a medium top six. But we could always take the chance and hope we hit the elite. With someone like Lottie or Rochette. I mean, Lottie's scheduled to go 21, or, you know, they're figuring he's going to go 21 across the board, our scout, central scouting. So. But here, this guy's got three years ETA, no negative weaknesses at all for Downey. And size and strength goal scoring, take the pick. We're going to take Downey. And... We have one more pick here in the first round, number 29. And we can take this low elite here, who I had pinned, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Take a low elite for some trade value. So we got a medium top six, a medium elite, and a low elite with our three first round picks, this one here. And we'll move into the second round as soon as we see who went at the end there so there's a high starter goalie there at the last pick of the first round and with our pick in the second round this is where I kinda of start going off the board a little bit and picking some of the guys I know are going to be elite for us and either they'll turn out or we can use the trade value role players I usually acquire via trades draft or sorry uh, trades or free agency I try and draft high-end assets that I can use or trade so I don't try and draft too many role players. I don't want to waste my picks on something like that. So we're going to go with Gundler here. He's a medium top six. And we're going to send him to the 58th pick. And with our next pick, we could get someone like Tucker Tynan, who I've seen in other uh, GM modes or franchise modes. Turns out to be pretty decent. But I'm going to go my own route. We're going to pick our own guys. Based on what our scouting says. So we had nothing scouted on him. We're going to go and do ours. We're going to take this goalie here. So he's a medium elite. But 47 overall. Lots of work to do. Could be trade bait. With our next pick. Just take it here we've got three guys left pinned I might just take all three of these guys out of order there's a guy we didn't have pinned that should be pinned so you pin him and him supposed to be a low top six that's what we're gonna take low top six 63 overall should have a little bit of value to him and with the next one we're just gonna take this guy medium elite boom center power forward medium elite and up to the 105th pick. And there's a trade offer. Our 4th, 105th overall. For a 4th and a 5th next year. I'm going to decline that. Because there were still guys in our pinned list that we want. So we want to at least give these 3 guys a good chance. 
to get on our team here. It doesn't look like. I'll take a chance on Cormier. See how it goes. Medium top six. Defenseman. See, so yeah, sometimes when you take those chances, it doesn't always work out. Try and make an offer here to grab Ottawa's fourth round pick. Nope. 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 <laughs> they weren't having any of that. So let's just send to our next pick and see which of our guys are left. There's a trade offer from the Rangers. I can decline that. See if there's any of our pins left. We'll just start from the top and then we have one pin guy left. So there's a low elite. 48 overall, two-way forward. And head up to pick 176. See if that last pin guy is there. Take him. So I think that's going to be it. I'm just likely going to trade off the rest of these picks here. i got no pin guys left that I want. So... I'll just probably search a trade on them and get what I can for them for next year. Ooh, top, low top six. Maybe I'll take Generous or Marks. Nah, we'll just we'll deal them off. See what we can get for these last two picks and call that the draft and then that'll be where we end this video here so in my next one we may not get you won't see the f uh, the contract renewals but we'll make this trade and that'll be it for this video and take a quick peek at who was drafted and I hope to see you guys in the next one definitely everybody thank you for watching and supporting me on these different gaming video endeavors so there's our picks. Take care, guys.